Hello, my name's Honey Thomas and I'm a cardiologist. I'm going to talk about this old heart of mine is weak for you, about heart failure with preserved ejection fraction in the elderly. The first lecture's aims will be to discuss the definitions, signs, symptoms and causes of heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. And the second talk will be covering the diagnosis and the management of this condition. In the first half of this presentation on heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, we aim to discuss what is meant by heart failure and specifically heart failure with preserved ejection fraction and how to recognise this in patients. So the first important thing is to establish what we mean by heart failure. It's actually a, a very general and non-specific term. We use heart failure to mean systolic heart failure, pulmonary edema, poor LV, cardiomyopathy, weak heart, fluid on the lungs, diastolic heart failure, and my own least favorite, congestive cardiac failure or CCF. These are all very vague and descriptive terms which don't really give you any idea as to what's causing the process in this particular patient and therefore don't really allow you to decide what treatments might help them. So the actual definition from the European Society of Cardiology for heart failure is that it is a clinical syndrome characterized by typical symptoms that may be accompanied by signs caused by a structural and or functional abnormality resulting in decreased cardiac output and or elevated cardiac pressures at rest or during stress. And one of the important things to allow us to understand heart failure is to recognise that heart failure is just a clinical syndrome and there are many different causes for it. Most people are familiar with the clinical features of chronic heart failure. Symptoms include breathlessness, cough, orthopnea and paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. Patients describe fatigue, abdominal swelling, abdominal discomfort, general GI symptoms and ankle swelling. The signs, um, the patient may be obviously breathless at rest. They may have bibasal crackles, tachycardia, hypotension. There may be ascites, hepatosplenomegaly and pitting edema of the ankles. So the more modern classification for the types of heart failure has divided this into three specific groups. There's heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, HEF-REF. These are patients who've got an ejection fraction less than 40% and are the patients many of us think we're talking about when we talk about heart failure. There are also a different group who are defined as having heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. And these patients we know as HEF-PEF and they are defined as having an ejection fraction of greater than 50%. A bit unhelpfully, the latest guidance also includes this new definition of heart failure with mid-range ejection fraction. And that essentially encompasses people who have an ejection fraction between 40 and 49%. No one really knows who these people are or how to define them or what to do with them. And they've created this particular group mainly to stimulate research into this area. It's important to understand that the ejection fraction normally is around 55 to 60 percent and that this reflects the proportion of blood that's ejected from the heart with each contraction and the ejection fraction should not be 100 percent which sometimes people are mistaken about. Heart failure affects one to two percent of the adult population and greater than 10% of people over 70 years. Estimates suggest between 22 and 73% have heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. Those figures alone tell you that one of the challenges we have is how we actually define and diagnose heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, which I'll come on to in a bit. It's certainly more common in women. Heart failure has a, a high mortality, again, varying depending on the definitions used with estimates varying between 7 and 17 percent. Mortality is highest with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction and prognosis can be difficult to predict. What we do know is that morbidity in heart failure with preserved ejection fraction and heart failure with reduced ejection fraction is similar. 
When we think about the causes of heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, which is the form of heart failure we are most used to dealing with, then the causes are relatively straightforward. Essentially, any of the causes of significant structural heart disease. The commonest of these is coronary disease, hypertensive heart disease, the effects of alcohol or cardiotoxic drugs on the heart muscle, myocarditis, valvular heart disease, congenital heart disease, and various forms of cardiomyopathy. When we think about heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, there are no specific causes for this condition, and it's more that there are a selection of clinical factors which contribute to and are part of the picture of heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. Increasing age, hypertension, the presence of left ventricular hypertrophy often due to hypertension, coronary disease, diabetes, obesity, kidney disease and sleep disordered breathing. These contributory factors more and more describe an enlarging group of the population with significant comorbidities and I think it's helpful to think about this more as a syndrome associated with all these factors than as a specific etiology like in heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. By now you should know what heart failure with preserved ejection fraction is, how to recognise and what causes it. Please listen to the next lecture where we'll talk about how to diagnose and manage heart failure with preserved ejection fraction.